Okay, welcome traders. It is 1 p.m. British summertime. Welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Nunnally. Before we get going, can I just check, do a quick audio and visual check here. If you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the welcome screen, if you just type a Y into the chat box so I know that we are good to go. Testing audio, one, two, three. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, can you type a Y in the chat box, please? Good stuff. Okay, let's get going here. Uh, first of all, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And most importantly for today's session, what, uh, what we want to pay attention to is the fact that the views expressed by me are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains, and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading, and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly, though, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process-orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over this, an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I'm also, I also provide daily technical trade setup videos uh, shared through the Tickmill Trading View account. And I'll post a link for you to access that uh, those videos uh, later in the session. 
I also run Ticknell's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trading plan for the New York cash trading session of the S&P 500. I give my bias for the day and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 2,500 points of profit since we launched the group last year. The second tick mill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The tick mill futures trading telegram group is a real-time environment or on a daily basis. I share in-depth insights, analysis, and trades. I also provide live market commentary during the opening hour of the New York cash trading session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and I identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's charts. Um, what I would say before I begin is um, I'm going to cover a bunch of markets where I see uh, imminent potential trading opportunities. Um, if you have any questions, if you just type them into the chat box, and that once I finish the running through the charts that I'm tracking, I'll, uh, I'll cover off any questions you've got. Equally, if you've got uh, an instrument you want me to take a look at that I don't cover in my presentation, then you can just pop that into the chat box and I'll give you a view on that at the end of the presentation. Um, Antonio, how can I get to just a trend? Uh, I'll, I'll give you my email address. I'll, I'll put my email address on the screen at the end of the session, Antonio, and you can get in touch with me via email. Okay, so let's get going, starting with the S&P 500. Now, for those who uh, follow the TradingView uh, account, the Tignal TradingView account, where I post the uh, setups here, you'll be aware that I was looking for a correction higher in the S&P 500. Now, I use a, uh, an analysis tool whereby I track the uh, prior corrective swings in the cycle, and then I overlay them versus a, a tradable or a local low to give me an idea of target zones uh, where price may uh, start to, uh, to run into offers. So in this, um, in this move that we had into that 39, just below the 3950s, you can see that one, two, three, three of the last uh, five, correct, oh, three of the last six corrections uh, completed by them. And also this doesn't just give me a price level, it also gives me a time level. So we can see here that this corrective move uh, completed in a similar time scale to this correction here. And since then we got an outside reversal day on Wednesday and we are following through to the downside. Now, in terms of uh, downside targets, if we take out the 37.60, 37.50 today in the cash trading session, what I would anticipate is we are going to take a look at 36.20. Now, why is 36.20 important? Well, 36.20 would be an equal decline to the COVID crash that we saw uh, during the pandemic. Now, that doesn't mean to say that that's, that's you know, this is where the market's definitely going to stall. But certainly, um, if we work on the premise of uh, market memory and the idea that, you know, the, the market is essentially made up of uh, a bunch of human beings making decisions about uh, price and value, uh, given a similar set of circumstances or a similar scale in move, you will find that programmatic trading will probably kick in in terms of uh, the potential for profit taking at least or um, buyers stepping into the market as they see that, e that symmetry swing, so to speak, in terms of correction. So that's going to be the key area I'm going to be watching as we head into uh, today. We've obviously got month and quarter ends, so we can see some pretty erratic price action around uh, the close there today uh, with position squaring and um, window dressing in terms of portfolio managers. So 36.20 is going to be key today. If we take out 36.20, then we are looking at 3,500, which uh, represents a 50% retracement of the advance seen um, since the uh, COVID lows put in. And uh, if we get through there, then the next target area for me is this high volume mode, which comes in just, uh, just below those uh, post-pandemic crash highs there, 3414. So I'd be looking for a test 
into 3390s is a key area where uh, once again, I'll be watching to see if, uh, if buyers step in to engage on the long side. I'm currently in short positions um, in the S&P 500 at the moment. And so I'm going to pay close attention, like I say, to this 3750, 3760 area today in the cash trading session. If we take that out, then we're looking for that 3620 as the next downside target through there. We look for 3500 as the 50% retracement objective. Moving to the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ, um, again, using this similar tool of measuring prior uh, rally attempts in the, uh, the move to the downside, um, the NASDAQ didn't meet either, the, well, failed to meet the minimum price objective that we would have anticipated, which comes in just above 12,400. And we're in an interesting area here. This area is the equality objective versus the prior swing highs here at um, 50,269. So this 15,505 level is key. If we can, if, if as we head into the cash session, buy a step back in and we can take it back through the uh, highs of today, 11,714, what we could see develop is this type of uh, scenario. So if we hold our current swing lows here, then we could get a, uh, a, a next leg up in terms of a corrective swing here, which would take us into that price objective. The equality objective there would be uh, 12,650s. However, if we fail to, uh, to hold support here at the 11,500, then I'd be anticipating uh, further weakness to develop, uh, back down retesting the prior lows en route to a test of this descending trendline support. 10,700. And then below there, we have the confluence area of the 61.8% retracement and the 131 extension from our swing highs up here. So that comes in 10,380 to 10,500 area. So if we fail to, to find support here, then we'd be looking for another leg down to test lower into that 10,500, 10,300 area. But we'll see if uh, as cash Trading starts in New York. If uh, if we get some responsive buying, there is the potential that we could complete an ABC correction there in terms of the Nasdaq. Dow obviously weak as well, uh, in line with um, with the other indexes. So really, again, there's the potential for uh, another leg of corrective upside here. But if we don't find, or sorry, another useful um, tool to use. If we take out the 78.6% retracement, so the 30,130 area, if we fail there, the next downside objective is going to be the 127 extension of this prior advance, gives us 29,000, just above 29,000. I'm just checking here what we've got. 50% retracement, 27,400. And 70s, 27,370 is the 131 extension. So that would be the next target zone on the downside if we continue to see weakness. So it's really going to be key today and, and into tomorrow, certainly as well, to see if we can hold these retracement areas uh, to set us up for another leg of corrective upside, or if we or if the correction is complete here and we roll over to the downside, we know where our next downside objectives are. And the one that, that is most interesting to me at the moment is this Russell, because the Russell, out of all the US indexes, the, ma the major US indices, the Russell is the only one that hasn't tested its equality objective yet. And that equality objective comes in at 15,079. And interestingly as well, sorry, 1579, not 15,000. Uh, interestingly as well, this coincides with the weekly high volume nodes. Um, so I'm going to be paying close attention to the Russell further weakness. So if we, let me just draw this in view. So any move through this trend line support here would be an opportunity on the short side. So taking out 1670 would set up that test then of the 1570. So hundred points of downside to play for there. So a nice risk reward scenario in terms of the Russell, the DAX, as we talked about last week, the key for the DAX was to hold on to this weekly trend line. We're taking it out at the moment. Now, any close that takes out this prior low, 12,430s, and this high volume load, uh, 12,350, that's going to be pivotal because if you take that out on a closing basis, 
Then the next downside objective for the DAX is the e equality objective, which comes in at 11,129. We've also got the 61.8% retracement there at uh, 11,230. So um, we're really paying close attention to the weekly close here on the DAX. And if you take out that prior low and that high volume low, then we want to be focused on the short side with those downside objectives in mind. Nikkei. In line with the other indexes is reversing here any weekly close that takes out 25,540 bearish development and then we are targeting the equality objective down to 22,550. Moving to the FX space taking a look at the dollar index we are setting up for this eventual fifth wave test here and the target for me on this one is this R3. Now this is going to be a pivotal um, pivotal test here, especially if we get it today, because what we've got coming into today, like I said at the beginning, is we've got month end um, rebalancing taking place and portfolio managers, due to the uh, disparity between the performance of uh, US and uh, other equities, are having to um, repact, are, are basically having to buy dollars to uh, rebalance their books. And that could see this dollar index finally pop into our target zone here, 106.30s, 106. Uh, 17s. From there, as long as we maintain this momentum divergence, I'm going to be moving into dollar short positions, um, certainly thinking about a, a corrective move back into test support to the 10130 area will be the, uh, the target for me on, uh, on the downside initially, um, because we should see this, um, this completion of this fifth wave move. And then in terms of further downside targets, we can see the weekly trend line support coming in just above the 100 level, 150. So pay close attention to uh, the, the 4.30 UK time. That's when you get the, the London fixing flows. If we see a really nice spike in the dollar and then a reversal, that's going to be an opportunity to move into tactical uh, short positions in the dollar, to my mind anyway. Um, equally here with the euro, any break through the support at 103.50, the target is 102.40 on the downside. So that would broadly co um, coalesce with the dollar testing above that 106. From there, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to trade tactically long euros, looking for a move back into that 103.50. And then the trend channel support comes in 104.70s. Uh, Sterling, we, we held that 120. We've got a nice, a decent reversal. I'm not uh, not as uh, not as strong as we would like to have seen, uh, but we obviously are seeing Sterling weakness in line with the other majors. So we could break lows here um, through that 119.30, giving us a test of 118. From there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns, looking for the trend channel test there. 121.80. So again, sterling is obviously going to take its lead today um, and tomorrow from the dollar index. So we really want to pay close attention to that dollar index because that's going to give us the, the key signal, the confirmation signal with respect to um, these FX majors. Dollar yen is another one I'm paying very close attention to. I think this has the potential to uh, ping up and test now the ascending um, wedge resistance. Come in 137.70s. From there, I watch for bullet, uh, bearish reversal patterns as long as we maintain um, negative divergence here in terms of the uh, momentum indicators. And then we look for a break of the trend line support, 135. And I think that gives us a move back down to 131 uh, for a corrective play there in terms of the dollar yen. And taking its lead from the, the yields, we talked about this last week, we've got a pretty meaningful double top in place here at the 3.248% uh, and tested our target zone of 35 and have reversed sharply. And these yields have been trading uh, in co close correlation to the dollar yen. So this weakness we're starting to see in the yields on the re recession fears um, should what start to weigh on the dollar yen and give credence to that setup in terms of the wedge pattern. Bunch of other yens I'm watching. This euro yen is looking weak to me. We're getting a, an outside reversal here and we are flipping the um, five, five week uh, volume weight average price bearish here. So I'm going to be sh looking to be short dollar yen uh, through 141.30, initially targeting 139.46. But ultimately, I'm looking for this high volume node 136.70 as, uh, as the next downside objective. Sterling yen as well, rolling over. I'm looking for sterling yen to take out last week those. Then I want to engage on the short side, targeting the move down to test 
uh, trend line support into the 158 area. We have that uh, high volume node there as well, 156.30. So those are some of the downside targets we're looking for as we break last week's lows in terms of sterling yen. Again, flipping that five-week um, volume weighted average price bearish as an additional confirmation. We haven't really been able to get any traction above the, uh, the 166 handle in terms of dollar yen. And similarly, in the euro yen, we've been rejected now three times. Nice topping tail patterns from the, the yearly R3. We've got nice momentum divergence in place. So I'm really favoring some of these yens uh, as short opportunities. Uh, Aussie yen holding up pretty nicely, actually, holding this, uh, this trend line support. So really, I'd need to close through that trend line support and the high volume node here to engage on the short side, looking for a test of 90.49. Alternatively, if we break higher, then I'm looking for uh, triple divergence to develop and uh, this ending diagonal pattern. 9780s, watch bearish reversal patterns, and I'll be engaging there on the short side. CAD yen holding up with, uh, the, with a bit of a pop that we've seen in crude. I'd really want to see a close back through 10350s to start to think about short positions. And then we target the base here, 9829, on the high volume node just above there, 9980s with the downside objectives. Kiwi yen. Any close through this trend line support, I think is an opportunity on the short side. Again, we're getting a, a bearish reversal in terms of the uh, weekly volume waste average price. Gives us a target zone down here, trend line support, 79.20s. So a, a decent move to play for there in terms of the Kiwi Yen once we take out this trend line support. Dollar CAD, we are looking for that 132 test. Uh, tested back into the high volume node here on the daily uh, price, uh, sorry, on the daily scale, got some bullish reversal patterns. So any move through this trend line resistance in the pivot here, 129.40s, long targeting that test of 132 on the upside, which is our equality objective. Aussie, starting to uh, feel some pressure here with the souring we've seen in global risk sentiment. So I'm looking for any move through 68.30s. I want to engage on the short side and I'm targeting 66.40s, which is the big quality objective um, versus the swing structure that we have in place from the 76.60s. Kiwi, also weak here. So close through the prior lows, to my mind opens a test of the 60 handle on the downside. 60.13 is a, an equal length objective versus this swing structure here and the breakout from the triangle. Um, so that's the downside target there. We do have an equality objective, 61.26. But bear in mind the position that the dollar's in and uh, some of these other commodity currencies, I think we can trade a little bit lower there. So I'm looking for that test of the 60 figure. Oil, uh, sorry, gold breaking down as, uh, as we talked about last week. So any move now through 1780 gives us that downside objective of 1670, which is the big quality objective and really the base of this bigger trading range that we've been in um, over the past few years. So from there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns. There are some big cycles, uh, 60 and 90 year GAN cycles that come into play um, in August with respect to gold and the gold miners. So pay, pay close attention to where we we trade in August in gold. I think there's an opportunity for a, uh, a significant move, um, potentially to the upside once we complete this corrective move. Silver breaking down now and a daily close through that 2042 level gives us 1848 as the downside objective for the major corrective swing to complete. And then we'll see from there if buyers are going to step in. And again, if we get that reversal in gold, that should take silver with it. And we'll be looking for upside in some of these pressure metals and, uh, and weakness in the dollar to help drive that. Let's check in with these cryptos having uh, further weakness, taking out the uh, briefly overnight, taking out 19,000 to the downside. My target is into the equality objective. 12,000 is the area where I'm going to be paying very close attention to Bitcoin. Alternatively, if we can take out this trend line resistance back through 24,700, that could suggest that we've seen a uh, decent tradable low in place and we look for a move into the high volume mode 29,700. But for now, nothing for me to do at the moment. I'm just watching for this 12,000 test to, uh, to set up. Similarly with Ether, we are looking for 851. So close this week through the thousand level, I would 
play tactically short, looking for that test of 851 to complete this uh, major corrective cycle versus the swing structure that we have in place here in the uh, 3580s swing high. Let's just finish up here with uh, copper. Copper's coming into the corrective target zone that I talked about, uh, 3.5865, uh, 3.5240 is the area. From there, I'm gonna be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, uh, looking for move then into trend channel resistance in the high volume mode, 4.4370. So that's the whistle stop tour, so to speak, of the uh, markets that I'm tracking. Really pay close attention to this dollar price action into the London fix today. If we can spike that 106 and get a reversal, then I think we have decent, some decent trading opportunities, decent risk reward there for a pullback to, uh, to develop in terms of the uh, dollar and some of these FX majors at, uh, at some decent levels as well. And pay close attention to that Russell when it tags that equality objective. That could be uh, that could be the catalyst to see a turnaround in terms of some of these equity indexes. But lining the sand today is going to be 3550, 3560 in terms of the S and P mini S and Ps. And um, if we break through there, then we know we've got 3620 as the next downside target ahead of 3500s. So that's uh, those are the markets I'm tracking. Are there any questions, or would anyone like me to take a look at a chart I haven't covered and just type it into the chat? I'll um, I'll also post some links for the uh, S&P 500 strategy group. You just simply uh, request access on Facebook and I'll add you to that. I'll also give you the uh, tip mill trading view link so you can follow these trade ideas through the daily videos that I post there. And I will leave you with my email address for those who want to follow up any questions. Uh, you want to reach out to me on email. My, you can reach me at patrick.munley at tickmillpartners.com. If you don't have any questions, if you type an N in the chat box, so I know I've done a reasonable job of explaining uh, the views that I have at the moment on the markets. Remember, it, month end coming in, uh, 4.30 today, likely to see some volatility. So if you're in positions, Tighten up some stocks, lock in profits. Don't get uh, don't get spooked with uh, some short term volatility. Okay, I can't see any other questions coming through, so I'm going to wrap this session up here. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much. <laughs>